Hi, it's Cheryl with Caribou Country Lifestyle. I wanted to do a little video. Actually, I had a request to give information about being prepared and having a relatively successful year in gardening. Usually, what I try to do is um, you want to, for me, I live in zone three and I'm in the caribou area. Usually our growing season is from June the 7th until the end of September, which is about 110-ish days. So that's, um, not a bad growing season. We are, do have a short season and it gets, we get our four seasons, the fall, winter, spring, summer, but we usually can't get into our garden area until, uh, well, waiting for the snow to melt, depending on how much snow you get. Uh, we have a fairly cold winter sometimes. It can be as low as minus 30-ish degrees Celsius. And in the summer, this last summer, we actually had about four very hot days that were in the 40s degrees Celsius. And we really don't usually get a summer with days quite that hot. It, yes, for sure, in the th mid to late 30s, but it's never been in the early 40s, at least not for a long time. It's having about a 110 day growing season, uh, I usually order my seeds in February. I will, throughout the year, pick up seeds through the local businesses, or if I happen to be in other areas, I'll go to bigger centers like Home Depot or um, ArtNap and find quite a few, especially if you're looking for certain varieties, you may not find them in every store that you go into, especially with the bigger box stores like Walmart and Canadian Tire sometimes don't always carry a lot of uh, special varieties that you might be looking for. When I do order my seeds, uh, last year I ordered seeds through Lindenburg and they are actually based out of Manitoba and I also order seeds through TNT and they are another company that's based out of Manitoba. I am planning on checking out a couple of other seed companies for online ordering and one I'm one I'm planning on checking out is Mackenzie Seeds and another one is Vessi's Seeds. So I will probably be going online and requesting a catalog from them. Lindenburg Seeds, they don't have online orders but you can send in your seed order through a fax. So if you get the catalog, you just go through your catalog and you can send it in with the fax, with your payment methods. And usually you will, it takes about two weeks for your seeds as long as they have the varieties that you're requesting. But usually average is about two weeks. Um, for me, I start a lot of my seeds indoors under lights. Um, when you are picking out your seeds, uh, try, especially for shorter season growers, try to pick seeds that have a shorter season. I did some tomato seeds and some of them were like, you know, 80, 90 days maybe even a little bit longer. I'm going to be looking for some shorter season tomatoes just because you want to be able to, I found that the tomatoes grew really well, but they weren't ripening as quickly as 
other tomatoes that I have gotten. So I really want to pay attention to seeds, especially for tomatoes with a shorter season and peppers too. Peppers, it would be good to have them in a shorter season. Um, and eggplant. Peppers and eggplant like really hot weather. If you have a greenhouse, optimally that would be a better choice. I do not have a greenhouse, so I another reason why I start my seeds inside is because of our short season. It's just and I usually am starting some of my seeds as early as February. And with that being said, um, like geraniums, pansies, I start those in February. I start uh, herbs, peppers, usually about mid-March, and then tomatoes, especially about the end of March. As far as for flowers, it all depends on a lot of, if you check the back of your seed packet, it will give you how many weeks before. Sometimes it'll say start 12 weeks before, 10 weeks before, eight weeks before, six weeks before your last frost date. I just wanted to show you, I have one seed packet here and it's for zinnias. I plant a lot of zinnias in my garden. And on the back, so it has a little chart on the back. And in that chart, it has at the very top, for earlier blooms, start indoors four to six weeks. So it's giving you a rough guide of when to start your seeds. And I usually will follow that guide when I'm starting, especially for my flower seeds. I've come to realize for certain vegetable seeds, um, peppers, I like to start them re quite early and that is because they like so much heat that I like to give them the, the prime growing conditions. So if I'm starting my seeds indoors and I'm starting them in mid-March, those plants are fairly large when I'm planting them out in the garden. And I still even protect them because last year I waited, our, my last frost date last year was June the 2nd and I waited until June the 5th to plant my peppers. There are suggestions to wait anywhere from a week to two weeks to plant your peppers after the last frost date. I waited a few days and I planted them. So my last frost date was supposed to be June the 2nd. I planted them June the 5th and the next day it actually hailed. I was able, because I had protection around my tomato or around my pepper plants, I was able to protect my pepper plants from the hail. The year before that, I planted my peppers around the same time and the same thing happened. It hailed and it beat my plants to a pulp and they never amounted to anything. They didn't grow any bigger. They didn't produce any flowers and they did not, let alone, produce any peppers. Look at your seed packets when you get them in and have everything pretty much organized. I have a system how I organize my seeds and so I picked up their photo boxes and I've picked up them through Amazon. And I just have labels on the front. This one is uh, vegetables and herbs. And on this side, I put a little label there and it says 12 weeks. So that just tells 
lets me know I grab that, oh, I'm starting these 12 weeks ahead of time. I pull that one out and I start those seeds 12 weeks ahead of time. Then I go down from there at the 10 week mark and then the eight week mark. As I get to the eight weeks, I actually have more seeds that I'm really starting to start seeds then is at eight weeks. That seems to be the, the magic number, the eight week number. So I have all my flowers in my eight week container and I have it labeled on the front like on the front I have eight weeks here I have it's just flower seeds in this one I have eight weeks this is just tomato seeds that's all I have in there tomato seeds my next eight week pack this is just all herbs and vegetables that I would start at eight weeks so then I go to my six weeks and then I go to my four weeks. Then I also have all my seeds that I would start outside. I have that labeled outside seeds. These are all flowers that I can just plant the seeds right outside. I don't have to start them indoors. This one is outdoors, but it's just peas. A pack of peas, like packages of peas and beans, that takes up a lot of space. They're not small seeds, they're quite large. So they take up a lot of space. So I just have this one container with just peas in it. This one for just outside, this is just radishes. Radishes are not big seeds. I know they aren't. Uh, I just have a lot of varieties. I like to try different varieties of radishes. What I do is I will, on a piece of paper, I will lay out what my garden will look like. Now for me, I have raised beds and the reason I choose raised beds is because they actually can be worked in quicker than the in-ground they the dirt seems to be able to i be i'm able to work the dirt in with the raised beds i find the raised beds um is easier i'm not getting any younger so i have them they're about a two foot high and then i have an edge around it so that i can sit on it and be able to weed and it's easy to reach over my beds. My beds are only four feet by eight feet. So I really enjoy having raised beds. I do not have any in-ground gardens. I am planning on doing some in-ground gardening this year, but in my in-ground gardening, I'm going to be having things like potatoes and um, bigger, what things that I'm doing more of. So my potatoes, rutabagas, uh, a lot more like the root vegetables. I plan on planting more to help supplement for any other animals that you might be have on your property. For us, we, have, we raise laying hens and we raise meat birds. We also raise meat pigs. So I try to plant an excess of vegetables to be able to help feed the pigs. So then that cuts back on our <clears throat> hog feed that we actually have to buy from our local, um, from our uh, local feed store here in the Caribou. So laying it out on a paper works well. I have, this is, I just get a graph paper and I lay out my garden and then, and it changes each year. So this year I may plant things the same as for next season, but I'm going to be moving things around. I may not be planting the same things in the same beds. I try to mix it up. And the reason I do that is so that 
the nitrogen that was maybe from beans. The nitrogen that beans put off into the ground. Whatever follows that the next year, that vegetable, that's going to help that vegetable as far as, so, you know, a lot of people, they do companion planting. And companion planting does work. I, I put a lot of things that I know that grow together well. And also I put in a lot of flowers like um, marigolds are a good pest deterrent and alyssum is a good pest deterrent. I put nasturtiums in around amongst in around my plants, my vegetables, and I like to plant zinnias. Now zinnias, I just like what how they look, so I plant zinnias around as well. I would definitely check on Google to find out when your first and your last frost dates are. Cucumbers and squash plants. Uh, those are seeds that I usually start about four to six weeks before I would be putting them in the ground. As far as for squash, that would be your spaghetti squash, your butternut squash, it could be um, acorn squash. There are so many different squashes. Those are the ones that I would start the seeds at four to six weeks. Same with your cucumbers. You don't have to start zucchini seeds four to six weeks. I plant my zucchini seeds right in the ground and I usually plant them like I'll mound up a hill and I'll put you know five to seven seeds in the mound. And then once they poke up through the ground, last year I actually had to plant my zucchini seeds a couple of times, but that wasn't because um, the seeds were bad. It was because my cats kept going in there and using my raised beds to poop in. So they were digging around and they were mixing the seeds all up. And so that's why I had to keep planting those ones over was more because of my cats. It's hard to keep your cats out of your garden. In April, I will follow the rule of five weeks before my last frost, I will actually go out and I will plant um, I will plant vegetables that are hardy vegetables. Hardy vegetables are your, your beets, carrots, lettuce, onions, peas, potatoes, radishes, rutabaga or turnips, spinach and Swiss chard. Those are all vegetables that you can be planting five weeks before the last frost date right in the ground and it, the cold at night will not affect those seeds in the ground. Um, just prior to the last frost date you can actually plant your beans, corn and zucchini and those are like I say those are not seeds that I start in advance so you can plant those seeds right into the ground and we have the heat loving seeds and these are the ones that you're waiting until a week to two weeks after your last frost date and that would be your cucumbers eggplant tomatoes peppers melons pumpkin squash and I think that's it and you want to use that. Now, as far as the fertilizer goes, you want to be either fertilizing it every week or every two weeks. You don't want to be fertilizing it every time you water your plants, but usually it's every week to two weeks to fertilize your plants. Once you get them outside, you can still use a fertilizer or you can put on compost. So I have here, it's a seaweed concentrate. 
And this one here, it actually, it says here that you need uh, half a teaspoon per liter of water. And you're applying this every week during the growing season until late fall directly in the soil. Is for your seedlings, once they have, once the, a set of leaves appear on your seedlings, you would be applying this seedling starter every two weeks for a month. And those are the ones that you're having in your house, starting under your lights, that you would be adding your fertilizer. Once it has its true leaves on it, you would be adding your fertilizer every two weeks for a month. So basically you're going to add it twice in a month. You could, well, you could do it the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, and the end of the month. You could do that too. And that's the 105210 seedling fertilizer. Now I'm in the, my basement and this is where my garden season starts and that's February, March and part of April. So where it starts is right here. I have, this is I'll come from this side. This is a plant seed starting stand that my husband built for me probably about at least 20 years ago. And it's four feet wide. He picked up some old ballasts, light fluorescent light ballasts from his work. They were gonna throw them out. So he brought them home and then he built the frame around it. Each of these ballasts are adjustable. He has little strips on the sides that the ballasts can sit on and that's on both sides. So I can slide these ballasts out and adjust them depending on what, like if I'm starting brand new seeds, they'll be actually down quite low over the seeds to get them started with them needing that light to get them started. In the ballasts, I'm just going to take it from the bottom angle, those light bulbs, the fluorescent tubes, one is just a regular tube and the other one is actually a grow tube. And these are my, I have two spare grow tubes for my light ballasts. My sister is actually coming out from Saskatchewan this Christmas and she has four two foot light ballasts with lights and she's going to bring them out and I think we are going to try those as well and see how that works. That just gives me more seeds to be able to start. With this plant stand that I have, I can start 16 flats of seeds. Now that's a lot of seeds but it doesn't take long to fill it up and then I'm looking at it thinking, oh my gosh, I'm running out of room. There's my dirt. Anytime you can pick up dirt on sale, you want to be picking those things up. I have a Jiffy seed starter mix, miracle Grow seed starter mix. I just picked up these two bales of growing mix as well. I have the sun grow and I have the sunshine mix and I picked these up at Art Nap and those costed me $27 for each bale. And when you think about that, 
Those small bags of seed starting mix, I'm paying anywhere from five to seven dollars for a bag of that. And that's this big bale, that's 107 liters. And I'll just compare to this. That bale was 107 liters. This is 13 liters. So that's 10 of these. Well, 10 of these would cost me $70. If I was to pay the price that I paid for this, that would be 70 bucks. So I uh, definitely got a good deal there. A lot of my pots I have, haven't have purchased extra pots, I've just reused them and I will uh, sterilize them and get them ready for the f next year or so. When I do that I just put them in my laundry tub and I fill it up with water, a little bit of dish soap and I also put in a bit of bleach into the water and I just wash them, wash them up and then I give them a good rinse and let them dry and I will reuse those pots for my next planting season. So I hope this helps you with your gardening season. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to throw a comment in down below. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. So that's all I have for you for today, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.